everybody. Welcome to the tent. I want to welcome you this morning. Uh, just draw attention to um, the bulletin because the bulletin is going to have uh, lyrics for the songs, and I encourage you all to sing along with us uh, with these songs. So if you don't have a bulletin, we have a couple folks that, uh, that can help you with that. And uh, so let's go ahead and open up this, uh, this service with prayer. Would you join me in that? Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day, the day that you have made. Lord, we rejoice. We are glad in it because we know that, Lord, you have good things in store for us. We know that we gather together today in the unity of the body, one heart, one mind, one spirit, and that's the spirit of God. And so, Lord, help us, Lord, to gather. Help us to uh, focus our attentions upon you. And as we sing this morning, may our attitudes be one of worship. Lord, as we... As we hear scripture being read, Lord, may it be one that, uh, that we are receptive to or what you want to say and speak into us. And as we hear the word today, God, may, uh, may, it, uh, may it change us. Uh, may we align ourselves to meet with your word, to meet with your ways. And so, Lord, open up our hearts and mind to what you have in store today for us. Help us to receive all that you have. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to join, uh, again, join us in this song and stand if you are able. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise Him, for He is your health and salvation. Come all you here, now to His temple draw near. Join me in glad adoration. to the Lord above all things so wondrously reigning sheltering you under his wings so gently sustaining and have you not seen all that is needful has been sent by his gracious ordaining to the Lord who will prosper your work and defend you. Surely his goodness and mercy shall daily attend you. Ponder anew what the Almighty can do if with his love he and breath come now with praises before him let the amen sound from his people again gladly for all we adore let the amen so let the amen sound from his people again gladly for all seated. Again, good morning. Pastor Pete and Pastor Nikki are uh, taking the day uh, this weekend off, celebrating their 17th wedding anniversary. So yes, that's awesome. Uh, so they're enjoying a uh, little time away 
So we have a guest speaker today. We'll introduce him here shortly. Just want to remind you that uh, we have not only the lyrics in here, but we also have some updates or just some things that's going on in the church in your bulletin, so you can look at that. A couple of things I just want to draw attention to. Uh, one was we have a book, uh, like a journal or just a, I don't know how you, what you call that, but it's a, a book in the back to where we can write uh, some some good thoughts or just some things uh, that uh, Pastor Pete and Pastor Nikki meant to us. We just want to share in that. So that's that's in the back. It's a leather uh, journal. Uh, we have someone holding it up back there in the back. Uh, so you can see that, and it's got a tree on it. So people have already written it. So please make your way back to that before you leave and just you know share your thoughts, uh, uh, your appreciation with them. And that'll be here... They told me, and I forgot. Like, I think this is maybe the last Sunday, or I don't know. But So make your way back there for that. Um, we also have, um, uh, there's also some donations that can be made to, uh, to contribute to uh, so a gift that is going to be given to uh, Pastor Pete and Pastor Nikki. So if you want to uh, contribute to that, um, you can do that with tithes, uh, put your you know, in the tithing envelope and designate that to that gift. Um, uh, or come see me, like I said, because I can't remember who we necessarily need to uh, uh, address that to. But that the tithing envelope designated would probably be the best thing. And there's two tithing boxes here, one right in the center of this, uh, the tent at the back, and then one as you enter in. So you can grab those if you want to help to contribute, you know, to that for them. Uh, so, um, another thing that's coming up super quick is a women's art night. That's coming up uh, July 26, 7 p.m. Uh, sign up at the coffee station. So, if you want to know what that is, uh, we've got uh, Heather and uh, some others. I, I can't find any. There's Sue, uh, Sarah back there in the back. She can help you describe what that will look like a little bit. So, uh, and then we also have a baptism service coming up on um, August 7th. So, if you're interested in being baptized... Uh, please come and see me or one of the pastors here, and we can talk to you about that and get you set up for that. So uh, there's more in our bulletin on the back page especially, uh, so you can look at those things, blood drive, uh, what we're doing at Corn Fest uh, in Avon, and then there's another women's event coming up, things like that. So just check that out. But this morning, we're going to continue to worship through song, so I want to invite you to, to stand along with us again if you are able. I'm gonna go King of Kings this morning, so you can so you know where we're at. King of Kings. And in the darkness we were waiting, without hope and without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes To fulfill the law of prophets To a virgin came the word From a throne of endless glory To a cradle in the dirt to 
Till that stone was moved for good For the Lamb had conquered death And the dead rose from their tombs And the angels stood in awe For the souls of all who'd come To the Father are restored And the church of Christ was born truth of old it shall not kneel shall not faint and by his blood and in his name and in his freedom i am free for the love of jesus christ who has resurrected me Jesus, for he has said that he 
will bring me home and day by day I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne to this I hold my hope is only Jesus all the glory evermore to him and when the race is complete still my lips shall repeat yet not I but through Christ and when the race is complete and when the race is complete Still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. This morning I have the privilege of reading the scripture and it's Psalm 145. It's a psalm of praise. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. They will speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty, and I will meditate on your wonderful works. They will tell of the power of your awesome works, and I will proclaim your great deeds. They will celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all that he has made. All you have made will praise you, Lord. Your saints will extol you. They will tell of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might so that all men may know of your mighty acts and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Amen. Songs abide from my waking breath for my day. Drive. 
We thank you for uh, this day. Uh, Lord, help us to continue the attitude and the, the heart of, of worship this morning as we, as we set aside our troubles, our cares, Lord, knowing that, Lord, that you are concerned about them, but that you want, to, you want us to focus upon you this morning, and that you'll help us in, the, in anything that we want to do. Uh, so, Lord, give us strength. Again, help us, Lord, this morning to, to focus our attentions upon you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I think Bob's going to come up this morning and give us a, an update. Good morning. Well, first, I want to give an update on the pastoral search process. Many of you may have seen the, the email that went out, but I uh, just wanted to summarize that the pastoral search team in the last few weeks has been going through the process of interviewing a candidate, checking references, and then this, just this past Tuesday at our LBA meeting, they shared some of the information they had uh, learned so far. So um, what we learned after that LBA meeting, the candidate withdrew his name from consideration at AWC, so we never ne went to that next step of the board uh, interviewing that candidate. So we are back to looking for uh, the, who God has for this church. but. You know, throughout this um, process, back in the beginning, one of the things that our district superintendent, Matt Pickering, reminded us of is a job search for a church is much different than your typical worldly job search because we rely on God. We rely on God's discernment to direct us. So in this case, even though it's a disappointment that we will have to continue our search, it was one way for us an answer that God was saying this was not the man that he had for us. So while it may seem that like a setback, it, to us it was a continued answer for direction for finding the right pastor. And, and in the process of, after we learned this news, some LBA members were sharing encouraging words through email. And one of them was with a verse from Psalm 27, 14, where it says, wait for the Lord, be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. So while this process has been longer than we had anticipated, God is telling us to wait and trust in him. Often when we wait, we find the results are better than we expected. So our prayer, our, our request of you and our prayer for the church is that you'll continue uh, trusting that God will bring the right pastor to us. Pray that God will direct the leadership, not only the LBA or the pastoral search team, but pray for our staff as their, their load and continuing to lead the church um, is greater than normal. So continue to be with them as well as people that are, are serving in, in more capacities than they had been. 
So I just ask you to continue to do that and we will keep you updated as best we can. We will be in communication with Matt Pickering as to what the next steps will be and uh, what he may have for us that we haven't learned about yet. But now as we lead into our, our service, our, our preaching, it's my honor to introduce to you someone that we actually got to know many years ago. His dad, Bradley Strange, actually served as the pastor here at AWC. And he was a younger man then, a youth in youth, I believe. And that was a, a wonderful thing for him in the end because he met a young woman named Allison Yanda, who happens to be the daughter of Dorothy Ann and Joe Yanda. And they ended up being married and have two sons. And he continued in ministry himself. He went on to serve in, in, in different capacities, but he's currently serving at the, as the youth discipleship pastor at New Hope Wesleyan Church in Hornell, New York. And him and his wife and family live in Canastillo. So it's my pleasure to reintroduce, for those that may remember Aaron, uh, Aaron Strange is our speaker this morning. Will you welcome him with me? Good morning. Hey, uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, forgot to dismiss our children this morning. So at this time, you can go ahead and uh, have the kids to go over to the, Whew. well, there's one guy has a funny nose and the other guy is just funny, I guess. So anyway, you can choose which one. <laughs> anyway, so thanks. Sorry about that. Oh, you're good. Yeah. Welcome, yeah. Aaron. Whew, that was a close one. The kids would have had to been stuck here. Yeah. That would have been... Well, good to see some of you. Good to see some of you for the first time. And um, it's awesome to be here. It's really cool to be in this tent and uh, be able to be outside and preach this morning. Like they said, my name is Aaron Strange. My dad was a pastor here way back when. Um, was a teen at that point. Now, uh, teens, I'm an old man now. So just be careful because it, it goes by really quickly. Um, it's an absolute thrill to be here with you today and to open God's word. And I, is that and, but, if I need to yell, I can yell. You'll give me a mic? Okay. Well, while we're, while we're figuring this out, hope, I'm probably doing something wrong, so it's okay. But why don't we open up in a word of prayer, and we'll jump right into it. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that you've given us, and we thank you for this time that we get to come together and open your word. And uh, God, I pray that today your words would be spoken and not mine, that you would open our hearts to the message that you have for us today, and uh, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So what's Jesus' greatest desire? What's Jesus' greatest desire? There's a lot of answers to that question. Jesus' greatest desire. Some would say to have a relationship with him. That's true. Others would say to live in a way that is pleasing to him. But what he desires, his number one desire, his number one goal is a lot greater than that. And it can actually be found right before he is about to be betrayed. Right before about to be taken into custody. Because Jesus wants so much more than for us to not and this thinking, what is it that he wants? What is it that he desires? Our perspectives change when we know that our death is coming. Our perspectives change when we know that the few moments that we have might be our very last. Jesus is within that moment. He's, he's moments away praying in the garden by himself. His disciples are asleep and he's asking God and having a conversation with him, begging him, if, if there's any way for me to get through this and for us to do this without me doing this, please, that would be awesome. But Lord, not my will, your will be done. And he knows that there isn't. This is the only way to bring us back. But when we are at the very end, our priorities tend to shift. If you had 24 hours... 24 hours before your time you knew was going to be done, what would you be doing right now? Some of you guys might be going for a walk, looking at the birds and the sunshine and being like, wow, I can't believe I missed this. I can't believe I overlooked this. Others of you might be trying to spend time with friends and family to, to contact loved ones and to, and to let them know just how much you care for them. In the legal world, when someone is about to die, if they make something called a dying declaration, it is actually admissible as evidence. Because when people know that they are about to pass away, there isn't a whole lot for them to lose in that point. Does that make sense? 
There's not really a whole lot to lose. So he offers up this one last prayer before he's taken away to fulfill what needs to be done for us to have any chance of being with him. So if you guys could open up your Bibles to John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. For those of you who are online, good morning. It's good to to see you and feel you. Woo! (laughs) Guys, I love this, man. Let me tell you. Satan does not want this message shared today. It's going to happen. Not stopping. If it breaks down online, don't, we'll find a way to do su- subtitles or closed captioning. We'll figure something out. No worries. John chapter 17, verses 20 through 26. This is what it says. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you that they may also be one in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory that you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one even as we are one. I in them and you in me and that they may become perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and loved them even as you've loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am, to see my glory that you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you, and these know that, they have, that you have sent me. I may know to them your name, and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So the cool thing about this is that this is a rare opportunity in Scripture. We're watching Jesus, the Son, pray to the Father. We're flies on the wall in this conversation. We're we're listening to this dying declaration. This is the greatest desire that Jesus has ever. This is his greatest desire. We're listening to this prayer that the Son is making to the Father, this relationship that is so close. Some of us don't have a great relationship with our Father. Some of us do. If you have one that is biblical, if you have one that is based on what it was supposed to be to begin with, then you know what it's like to have a loving father who who loves you and cares for you. But even that example falls short because the perfect relationship between the son and the father, we have nothing to compare it to. Because you cannot explain the creator by the created. So Jesus' ultimate desire is for us to be united, one with each other, and one with God. That is his greatest desire of all time. Everything else he talks about all goes on to that one desire. It can all be filled in by that one desire. He wanted us to be united like his disciples were. Now the disciples, he had 12 of them and they were walking around with him for three and a half years learning and growing in this ministry that he has created watching it unfold before them how things were different. Things were not quite what they expected. They expected this warlord to and to overthrow Rome and to give them what they thought was going to be the kingdom. Instead, what Jesus gave to them was so much more. Not freedom from bondage in the physical world, but freedom from sin, from eternal slavery, from eternal death. There was a lot of learning that they had, had to do. None of them were really prepped to go into this kind of ministry. It was a growing thing. It was, it was a, a growth process. I'm sure many of you people have had opportunities where you've jumped into a line of work or a hobby or a job, and the first day, it didn't go well. I know when I worked fast food, there was one day I was trying to clean the, the oil fryers, and I did something, and long story short, the floor was covered with uh, frying oil, and I became the poster boy of what not to do at this restaurant. It only took another hour and a half to clean up. One, one thirty in the morning, most. But he wanted us to be united like his disciples were, because even though they were, they were struggling and they would have bickering and fights, look what happened after Jesus rose from the dead they started going out as a powerhouse to every corner of this world, preaching the gospel. The thing is, God wanted us to be a body, a completely united body. Now, there's something I want you guys to understand about that concept, though. Unity 
The concept of unity. Unity is not uniformity. Unity is not uniformity. Let me give you a great example. So you guys heard that I'm married to Allison, the most beautiful girl in the world. Sorry, she's taken. Um, and uh, so I have my in-laws here. Hi, mom, dad, my sister-in-law, my little niece, who's so cute. She's not blowing up yet. That's good. Now, this may shock many of you. Um, I have tattoos. Many of you, I don't need to ask you. I already know. You hate them. It is OK. My parents, especially, they're like, oh, gosh, whatever, whatever. But I always tease them and say, you know, one day I'm going to have alligator one over my dead body, you will. <laughs> it's not a hill I'm worth dying on. My dad got really mad at me, too. <laughs> But I'm 31, by the way, and I got these tattoos two years ago, so teens, listen to your parents. But anywho, I know not many of you would look at this and be like, wow, I need to get that. Probably the majority of you are like, yeah, you're on your own. That's OK. That is OK because we are different parts of the body. We all function the same way. We all function for the growth and the health of the body together. I'm very good with technology. I'm very good with speaking to people in relationship. I have a big mouth. I have no problem being on stage and talking. I do have a problem singing on stage. It's terrifying. My wife, she's the exact opposite. She can sing all day long, but if you ask her to say one thing, mm -mm, no. Each and every one of you, God has given you specific gifts. God has made you part of this body in some way, and you bring uniqueness to it. One of the things that we need to understand is you should not look at other parts of the body and say, that's what I need to be. No. Because if it was, God would have made you that. God made you exactly the way you are for a reason. Because we unite as the body. As a matter of fact, in 1 Corinthians 12, uh, 12 through 14, it says this. It says, for just as one, the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body Though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slave or free. And we were made to drink of one spirit, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. We are the body of Christ. You have skills and gifts that I do not have, and vice versa. We work together for the flourishing of the church, and when we unite as the church, with God in our hearts, we experience this ineffable love known only between father and son. This indescribable love. And if you don't have a good earthly father to understand the relationship, just understand that, think about what you wish your father was. Multiply it by a billion and you're close to maybe somewhat understanding how much God loves you. We are loved by God with the love he holds for his son. We already know that God loves Jesus very much, so if we are loved by the same love that he has for his son, we're pretty well loved. Our lives become transformed by the life of Jesus who now takes residence within our own selves. Those of us who accept Christ in our heart, we see this dramatic change that happens in the way that we live and the way that we walk, the way that we talk, the actions we do, the hobbies we have, Jesus equals change. If you don't, are not having change in your life, you don't truly know Jesus. You can't help but change because of him. However, there is a thief who would come to steal, kill, and destroy and ruin our unity in Christ. Now, I'm not, unfortunately, just talking about the devil. We, we have a great big world full of people that hate everything about this. When we read in the scripture that Jesus is talking about, it says we have unity in the body of Christ, but we continue to also be in this world. Now, world means two different things, okay? One, world means the planet. You know, nice thing, jellyfish, turtles, pizza, cool stuff. 
But world also means something else in the Greek. It means everything that opposes what God is. Everything that opposes what he stands for. That's the world. Being in the world has caused division in the church. I'm not saying it can, I'm saying it has. It's caused division in the church. There are examples of how division has struck the church. One of the greatest things that can happen in a church is pride. Pride is a very hard thing to overcome. Pride has a link to every single sin known to man because pride focuses on one person, me. That sounds a lot like another Bible character that we know of. They're called the Pharisees. Maybe you've heard of them. Did they know the word? Absolutely. Did they live it? Well, you know, I hear a lot of uh, perspectives from people who read about Christians or, or meet Christians, and they have those kind of assumptions right up front. You're one of those Bible thumpers, shove it down your throat kind of people. I honestly don't feel bad about them thinking that because there's many examples of churches and Christians who give that example glowing references. I don't necessarily mean you. That's between you and God. But we can't be oblivious to know that the church in and of itself has brought harm to the world. There's a saying that happened long ago that said the greatest single cause of atheism in the world today are Christians who acknowledge Jesus with their lips and then walk out the door and deny by their lifestyle. That's like the Pharisee smack dab on the head. Pride. It doesn't belong here. It doesn't belong here. Another thing is beliefs. Oh, beliefs, beliefs, beliefs. I think that this should be the way that this is happening. I think that is the way that we should be living. Probably the one that brings the most division. I'm going to say it, politics. Ooh, don't go there, Pastor Aaron. That's a touchy subject. It is. Let me, let me just ask one question. Is this the ultimate authority on how we should live? Yes. Then we're good. Because everything I'm about to say comes from this. You ready? Here we go. A.W. Tozer, a famous theologian, says this. After more than 40 years of experience, I am prepared to say that I have never heard or read anything of a political nature by a preacher or a church that was any good. When a man of God speaks as a prophet, his message is freighted with wisdom and power. When he speaks for a party, God withdraws his power and lets his servant speak without wisdom. As a prophet, he may call to judgment kings and presidents. Let him obey God and stay by his commission, and he will be God's voice to all men and all parties. Let him seek to identify his prophetic office with politics or place his power at the disposal of a party. And he violates his office and confuses his own face. Then he speaks as a discredited prophet, and not all his pretensions to omniscience can disguise the babble in his voice. Preachers have been known to go all out for some newly come politician because he spoke respectfully of God. Later, events made them wish they kept the cover over their mouths and allowed their man to prove his piety before they fastened themselves on his coattails. Christ is not a member of any political party. He stands outside of and above every party. His kingdom was not and is not and will never be part of this world. But politics tend to sneak their way into the church. I want to know if you're left or if you're right. I'm a little more worried if you're up or you're down. Because here's the thing, if you get your relationship with God right, everything else down here is going to turn out just fine. Politics don't belong here. You want to know my opinion on certain things, you can ask me after church, but it does not belong here. This is reserved for the holy office of God. Another thing that's brought division is temptations, these sinful desires of the heart. 
I've literally seen secondhand how someone who decided to have a, a special relationship with someone else besides their wife and the ruin that it brought to this person and to the family. Maybe the temptation of having a position or having more say in how the church is run. Here's the thing. If this ever stops being God's church, wherever you go, if it is never God's church, it's not a church. It's just a gathering of people and friends to talk and to make themselves feel okay while speaking what they want to hear as opposed to what they should hear. Temptations, they're all around you. Tragedy is another one. Tragedy has a great impact on how we live. Um, remember, for some of you that don't know, um, my wife and I have two children. We have a six-year-old and a one-year-old. Now, before you're wondering, no, we did not want to have children that far apart because now I have an energetic toddler who's on some type of adrenaline that I wish I could bottle and sell and make millions off of. And I have a toddler who now could climb higher than Spider-Man and reach everything that he's not supposed to. Whew. It's exhausting. If you're wondering where the gray hair came from, from there. In between that, though, um, my wife and I had five miscarriages with no explanation. In New York State, you're not allowed to get tested until after three. And through all the testing that we've done, through all the, the um, studies that we've done, there is no reason whatsoever that we should have had five in a row like that, none. And I'll admit, going through that, that, that tragedy, I'll admit there was some times where I looked at God and I said, what are you doing? Why would you have me go through something like that? And it would get even worse because it seemed everyone in our church was getting pregnant, breaking our heart. Or what made it worse, we would look at the world and say, those people are not even close to being fit for that parent. And you're going to give them a child and not us? What, what's the deal? Maybe you're familiar with that pain. Maybe it looks different, but maybe you're familiar with that pain. And the first place that we go to sometimes when we have that kind of pain is, God, you must be messing up something. You must be asleep at the wheel. Here's the thing. I don't understand why things happen all the time in this world. It's hard. At the end of the day, we know that it's because sin is here, because Jesus is not fully. What I do know is this. God said that he's already overcome the world, so what do we have to worry about? And even though I, we've lost five children, and, and don't, please don't misunderstand that. That really hurts. Yes, I didn't know them as a relationship, but we still had a bond. Our doctor didn't quite understand that because when we got pregnant finally and this person made it past those miscarriage times, they said, good, everything's fine now. No, it's not. We, missed, we lost five children. It still hurts. But I'll tell you what, heaven has five more reasons why I'm just so excited to get there someday. I'm thrilled. I'm excited, guys. It's like, whew. I'm not going to cry. Okay. Two more things. Fear of unacceptance. That's a tough one. And many reasons why some people don't want to step foot in the church is because what they get is judgment. Now, make no mistake. We should not at all compromise on the foundation of truth ever. But 1 Peter 3.15, always be prepared to give a reason why you believe what you believe, but do so with humility and respect. With humility and respect. We tend to chop that last part off. Guys, we need to be 100% truth and 100% love. There is no compromise. This is what Jesus did. 100% truth and 100% love. If you're all truth, you're Westboro Baptist, pretty much. Judgmental, hateful. If the word of God is a fine meal, think about your favorite meal in the world. Put it on a platter, get nice silverware, get a nice drink. If someone serves that to you, you want to be able to dig into it, you want to be able to taste it, enjoy it. It's delicious. That's how God's word's supposed to be presented. If I take that same thing and dump it in a blender and pure, puree it and pour it in the cup for you, it's the same thing. But it's disgusting. The same thing happens when we try to do that with God's word. When the presentation is not loving or when you try to shove it down someone's throat. Guys, I'm a pastor. I don't like the Bible shoved down my throat either. 
I don't mind conviction. But golly, presented the way that it deserves to be. However, on this side, if we're all love, you're going to be teaching what people's itching ears want to hear. You're going to give them this false security when in reality you're giving them nothing but eternal damnation. I've had a few students of mine that have gone down this path instead. And I'll admit it's hard. It's very difficult. We cannot compromise either one, not even a little bit. Jesus gave the perfect example of getting over the fear of unacceptance. Here's the thing, if this is a church of God, whoever you are, whether you're, no matter what, you are welcome here. We may not agree on everything, but know that you're still loved, know that you're still cared for. Not compromising God's word, but know that you are still welcome here to continue to learn and continue to talk and continue to grow. The healthy don't need a doctor, remember the sick do. Welcome to the hospital. And finally, selfishness. Being a pastor's son, there have been times where we've gone to churches and, and um, I know there were some people that were more concerned about what color the carpet looked like or you know, what kind of de- decorations we were going to have or the big debate today is why are we getting rid of all the pews and getting all these chairs and no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. I absolutely hate with all of my heart country music. Hate it. Amen. Hate it. Hate it, hate it, hate it. I'm telling you. I don't care about your beer, your grandma, your truck, your ex wife. I don't care. Stop. Stop singing about it. We're done. Your grandma may have got ran over by reindeer, but she's in the hospital. She's good. <laughs> Chill. All right? Here's the thing, though. If I live in an area where country music is going to draw people in, then slap a cowboy hat on me. I'll look ridiculous. But yeehaw. Let's do it. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about them. We need to be united. Have unity. We need to go back to the purpose of this being Jesus' last prayer before he's taken away. On the night before a man goes on a long journey, you will find him spend time with his family, And at the end of this time, he will commend to God not only himself or his journey, but also the family whom he leaves behind. And this is more so when you know that the journey is to be your last. That's exactly what Jesus did. He was talking about his disciples before he talked about everyone else. He said, God, I've been with these guys three and a half years, and I know the trouble that's going to be coming for them. Because if they hated me, trust me, they're going to hate them as well. And we know that to be true because... Almost every single disciple met a horrific death. But almost every single, every single disciple who stayed in God's will met that death with this joy and this peace that surpasses all understanding. Jesus didn't just conquer the world, he conquered death too, just in case you're wondering. So what do we have to worry about? He's committing this ministry, this fellowship, and he also asks for those who are going to hear this message to become one as well. That's you and me. We're the ones that have heard this message so long ago, and we're the ones that are beginning to teach this message to other people. Sorry, this microphone wants to go on tour. Sorry about that. Every single one of you guys are here today because someone shared the gospel with you. Maybe it was your family. Woo! No, we're going to preach this message, man. It's happening. It's happening. Stop it. It's happening. You're not dream- preaching the message. No, I'm good, man. I'm good. We're going to preach this message. Wait for me, Satan. Every single one of you guys are here because you had someone share the message with you, whether your family, whether a friend, whether an acquaintance, whether a pastor, whether anyone. We're called to go and to share that word as well to bring other people into this unity that God wants us to do. That's why he said before he left, go and make disciples of all nations. This being the last prayer before his mission, he makes it, it makes it so meaningful because he unveils this incredible love for all of his followers. 
He prays for us to be united as one, just as he is one with the Father. There is no greater example of unity known to man than that, and it's not completely understood by us. That is what perfect unity looks like. So here's the tough question. How do we get there? What do we have to do? Because that's a lot of big things that you're putting a lot on our plates. Okay? Let me give you the answer. Some of you guys, when you were walking in, you saw this little bowl full of blank puzzle pieces. Sorry, it's not for arts and crafts. My bad. But the way that we get there, the first thing that we have to do is believe. When you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, when you accept Jesus Christ in your heart, you get a blank puzzle piece. Now, something you know about puzzle pieces, no matter what piece you find, is that it belongs to something bigger than itself. A puzzle piece belongs to something bigger than itself. You know it goes together some way to make a bigger picture. When you accept Jesus, you are committing to be part of what that picture looks like. But for now, you're blank. You're part of the picture, but you're not quite sure where you belong. Well, that's the very next thing. When we believe, we learn where we belong. When you start to learn where you belong, when you start to look at the gifts that God has given you, when you start to look at the ways that you can reach out to people and share the love of Jesus Christ, your peace starts to get color. It starts to find its place. There's never a question, ever, of whether a piece belongs to a puzzle. So if anyone's ever told you you're not welcome here, you have no use, no, no, no. God made you specifically to fit in a perfect picture. Every person belongs here, including the ones that we may not like so much, including the ones that don't yet have a puzzle piece. But we continue to learn about us, learn how God has created us, and through that we begin to find where we belong in the church, where we belong in this bigger picture of unity that God has for us to begin with. And then finally, we become. Finding the, the color that we have, finding the shape that we have, finding the other puzzle pieces that are in the family, we go and we join to make that bigger picture. And I'm sorry, there's no hammering it in one, one place. There's no hammering it in. Every piece has a specific place that it belongs. And there's a lot of other people that need to get on the board with us as well because I don't know if you've ever done this. Have you ever done a puzzle where you had one piece missing? How frustrating that is. We've got to go looking for the missing piece. There's a lot of pieces out there that don't realize they belong to something bigger. That's where you and I come in. No puzzle piece is more important than the other. I know this is a corner piece. My, my brother-in-law said he gave me this because I'm edgy. Okay. But this isn't also a competition of, man, I wish I was that piece, or I wish I was that person, I wish I had those skills. Don't. Believe me, the world does not need another Aaron Strange. My wife would wholeheartedly agree with this statement. It does need one of you. You matter. So I'm going to invite uh, Pastor Marty to come up here. And, and uh, before you guys leave today, the, that bowl with all the blank puzzle pieces, I just want you to grab one, okay? Just as that reminder that you, you believe, that you accept God in your heart, that you belong to something bigger than yourself, and that you strive to become part of the unity that Jesus prayed for right before he passed away and before he was rose again. Today you get that puzzle piece as a reminder that you believe in Jesus with all of your heart that you belong here among others who are growing in their faith and finding ways to be used by how God chooses and becoming like the community that Jesus prayed for so long ago. Can I pray real quick for you? God, we are so thankful for this time that we get to come together. Lord, I know it hasn't been perfect. My mic's going everywhere. <laughs> the rain's been going. It's a little humid out. But Lord, may we make no mistake, may no distraction keep us from what you share with us tonight. That you desire for your church, for your followers, for your sons and daughters to be united just as you 
other are one. Lord, I pray for every person sitting here. I pray for our brothers and sisters over the world. Regardless of the that they're going through, regardless of the difficulties that they're going through, that they would cling to you. They may not understand completely the persecution or trials they are experiencing. But you have not left them. You are still with them. Lord, you are still with your church. Sometimes it's hard to cling to that hope because we see so many losing direction or choosing to make other things more important than they really are. God, at the end of the day, this is your church. This is your bride. This is the body of Christ. So I pray that we would reflect him as accurately as we possibly can, and we can't do that without the Holy Spirit's complete guidance in our lives. So be with us. Help us to continue to grow. Lord, in the areas where we struggle, equip us with people around us that can help us grow, strengthen one another. May we become a church that strives for nothing greater than for the unity of every person to be with the body of Christ just as unified as you are with the Father. And Lord, may we not just be unified with you, but also with each other. God, we're different. We have different hobbies, perspectives, gifts. At the end of the day, it is okay that we are different because we all are working together for the health of the body of Christ. And the way that we know that is because we test everything we do with scripture. Lord, we thank you so much for all that you've done. We thank you for the prayer. We thank you for the example. We thank you for the, the greatest sacrifice that we could have ever had. We don't deserve it. But Lord, you love us so much, and I pray that we would just spend our entire lives falling in love with you more and more each and every day. And may we share that love with others so that they too may get to know you and be part of this greater picture. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. to join with me. You can stand if you're able. But we will unite our voices as one. It's called Make Us One. One with the Father, one with the Spirit, one with the Son of God. sister, one with our brother, one family by the blood. Make us one. Make us one. Your will be done. Make us one. This is our prayer for the day. Would you uh, help us, Lord, just to, to grasp this concept? Of this is uh, 
your desire for us, Lord, to be united with you in heart and mind and spirit. And so, Lord, help us to, uh, to take this, to, to wrestle with it. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would convict us, sort of, places to where we are not united with you. That, God, that we can recognize those and, uh, Lord, come to you in confession. And, Lord, we know that you will restore us. For you are faithful and true. And, Lord, we look to you for our guidance and our direction. Help us, Lord, to be united with, with you, but united with others, Lord, so that they will know that you love them. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So before we leave today, just want to uh, thanks for coming. Thanks for worshiping with us. Um, you can pick up your kids after, after this as well. But if you have, uh, if you have a moment, uh, if you're able to help us to bring the chairs and stuff back in and put those on the racks, that would be really great. I really appreciate that. That helps out a, a lot. And uh, please hang around, fellowship, and don't forget the uh, puzzle pieces as you, as you exit. Take one of those home just as a reminder about being unified together today. Again, have a great day. Uh, may you go in the, the love of uh, God, the, the grace of our Jesus Christ, and in uh, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Have a great day. Take care.